Senate, averting the possibility of a January government shutdown. Congressman Pat Seabury has led the effort to back Republicans away from the shutdown strategy. My 10-year-old daughter understands that you can't defund Obamacare because you have to have 67 votes to override the veto of a president by the name of Obama. Will 2014 be the year of more cooperation? Washington, Central Ohio Congressman Pat Seabury is our newsmaker. During this week between Christmas and New Year's, many are enjoying the comforts of home. But food bank officials point out that more Ohioans are going hungry. Far too many of our folks are making choices between food, medicine, and medical care. It is the season of caring and giving. Lisa Hamler Fugit, Executive Director of the Ohio Association of Food Banks, will join us. Plus, our strategists Sam Gresham and Mike Gonadakis debate the best and worst moments in Ohio politics in 2013. It's all coming up on Capitol Square. Welcome to Capitol Square. I'm Tracy Townsend. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm Jim Heath. It was almost like a Christmas gift to the American people this month. Congress getting along, <laughs> sending to President Obama a bipartisan budget bill. It will be the first budget signed into law since 2009. It cuts the deficit and replaces some of the across-the-board sequester cuts. The budget debate also allowed Speaker John Boehner to distance himself from the Tea Party caucus in the House. He also took on directly several conservative fundraising groups. Well, frankly, I think they're misleading uh, uh, their followers. I think they're uh, pushing our members in places where they don't want to be. And frankly, I just uh, think that uh, uh, they've lost all credibility. You know, well, they, they pushed us into this fight uh, to defund Obamacare and to shut down the government. Uh, most of you know, my members know, that wasn't exactly the strategy that I had in mind. Uh, but uh, if you'll recall, the day before the government reopened, uh, one of the people at one of these groups stood up and said, well, we never really thought it would work. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Joining us this morning, we welcome back to Capitol Square, Congressman uh, Pat T. Berry. Um, Congressman, good to see you. Great good to morning. see you guys. Well, uh, let's start there. Heritage yeah. Foundation, uh, Americans for Prosperity. Are you joining the effort now to uh, put them in their place as the speaker just did? Well, you know, I, th I think it's just about intellectual honesty. And there are a lot of Americans, a lot of Central Ohioans who, who believe they're taxed too much, who are frustrated about the federal government, and who rely on these groups who often mislead them. And these guys in Washington that lead these groups are making millions of dollars, and they're not intellectually honest. They oppose the sequester that they vehemently tried to save because it, it wasn't, it was quirky, it was Mickey Mouse, it wasn't real. And then suddenly it's real. And we all know, everyone knows who understands the problems in Washington, the real problem is not discretionary spending, it's mandatory spending. And this is baby steps in the trying to deal with mandatory spending. So do you think these groups have a place in the, in the big picture or is it time for them to... Well, step back. I, it would be nice if they were intellectually honest, and they're, they just haven't been intellectually honest lately, both on the left and the right, and the right's got a lot of attention. But there are a lot of Americans who believe these groups, send money to these groups, who have true frustrations, who are part of a coalition to try to change Washington, and, and, and the speaker wants to do that. Mm -hmm. But when you're not intellectually honest, when you oppose something and then you support it after you try to make it better just to try to raise money, is, is just not, it's just not helpful. All right, so the last time we spoke um, was right after uh, the government shutdown. Was right. And you talked about the internal struggle of that strategy and how it had gone wrong. What has oh, it, been did? The it went wrong? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody thinks that. Yeah. Um, so uh, now let's fast forward. And right. what have been the discussions now? Obviously, the speaker feels a little renewed. U.S. Chamber of Commerce has said, look, we're going to put our money where our mouth is, and we're right. going to help out in districts where some of these Tea Party candidates are, are not telling the truth. So what have because I imagine the split still exists, but your side um, right. is now the prevailing message, or seemingly the prevailing message. Elections have consequences, and that's what the speaker has tried to say. And unfortunately, some of these groups have tried to, to convince Americans that we can lead and win as the minority party in Washington, D.C. 
We lost. Has that been the biggest surprise? It is I, unbelievable. You know what, we uh, lost. Growing up in the 80s and knowing a lot of political people, uh, just being around politics a long time, the Reagan philosophy was always big tent. Right. You know, we need the Southern Democrats, we need the union workers, we need the libertarians, plus the social conservatives. The bigger the tent, you win 49 states as he did in 84. Right. Seemingly, the message the last uh, decade has been, and I remember interviewing Senator Jim DeMint in South Carolina on this, where he, he told me, I'd rather have a caucus of 40 like mine and not right. have to worry about the squishy 11 and I remember thinking but the 11 give you the majority to well, govern and, and actually run the committee and that's what Reagan was so brilliant about we had James Baker come in and talk to us uh, a few weeks ago and he said you know Reagan always said if I can get 80 percent of what I want that's a huge victory Today, we have people who want 100%. And in the, in the form of constitutional government that we have, with a House, a Senate, bipartisan uh, majorities, right? House and Senate are controlled by different parties, different party controls the presidency. You have to compromise. If you can get 80%, that's a huge victory for anybody in divided government. What do you like about this budget compromise? It, it starts to focus on mandatory spending. That is the problem in Washington, D.C. First time in my lifetime, your lifetime, your lifetime, we have seen a actual decrease, not a cut in the increase, a decrease in spending on the discretionary side from year to year. Sequester applied to discretionary. Debt still went up. Why? Because discretionary spending, both defense and non-defense, are a minor. It's a, it's a it's a a minority of our spending. It's less than fifty percent. Can you get everybody mandatory? To say mandatory. That's going to be. We need tough. presidential leadership. We didn't have presidential leadership in this deal. We had Senate Democrat leadership with Patty Murray, but it's a it's a step in the right direction. I don't think we'll get presidential leadership until after the November election, when the president is go is then going to look for a legacy because he'll know. This is it. The last two years are set. I'm stuck with what I have. It's going to be a House majority uh, that are Republican, maybe a Senate majority Democrat, maybe a Republican. This is the lineup. This is what it is. Now it's time for legacy. Let's cut the big deal. Let's fix things. Veterans, uh, a lot of uh, uh, vocal constituency, they're not happy. The uh, cost of living adjustments, right. is that going to be taken up separately? It doesn't start for two years. For federal employees, it starts on January 1st. A new federal employee, if you get hired on uh, next week uh, if for a federal agency, you're going to pay 1.3% more than any other federal employee who was hired before January 1st. That's a big change. Taxpayers are now going to pay less. You, the federal employee, are going to pay more. Federal unions are really mad about that. That starts right away. But the military change doesn't start for two years. It gives us two years to look to see if there's better options. This came from the Pentagon. Remember, if we didn't do anything, on January 15th, in just a couple weeks, we would see huge cuts to defense because sequester was going to kick in even right. additionally. And President Obama wanted an extension of unemployment benefits. Why are Republicans resistant to that? Well, we, we have had record increases in, in unemployment benefits, longer than any time in the history of our country. If it's, it's been extended. Emergency unemployment has been extended now 12 times, added over $250 billion to the, to the federal deficit, to the, to the debt, and it... it uh, it wasn't going to be paid for. And so this deal was about reducing the deficit, not increasing the deficit. So it wasn't the right place. But listen, you still have nearly a year of unemployment benefits. And what we had come to us, uh, research, academics, employers come to us and say, we have jobs that can't be filled, and they're good jobs that can't be filled. My dad was unemployed once. It's tragic. It is isn't much. It seems Let me just say, we have, to, we have a social safety net, but we have conditioned people to, to try to find the exact job that they had before. But it just seems, Congressman, in this economy, that the CEOs now are back. CEOs are making record profits. Their, their, their salaries are set. And then you got the lower scale people who are still struggling in this economy with this stubborn unemployment rate that's just not moving. And they're the ones now that are going to lose the tiny benefits that the they emer get. The emergency the emergency unemployment benefits. You're still going to have a year, depending on unemployment rates in your state, a year of benefits. This is longer than any time in U.S. history. But remember, I've been out in Mansfield, I've been out in Zanesville, high unemployment rates. I go to manufacturers. They can't find people to work. It's, it's just bizarre to me. Why are they saying they can't find people to work? I mean, because they have jobs opening and they can't find people to fill jobs.
so then, good jobs. So then there needs to be something. I wish there was some. I wish there was that. some sort of way to connect people. Uh, some people look for the exact same type of job that mm -hmm. they were laid off from, not a new job. Training is really important. Training people for other opportunities is really important. Congressman, we're out of time, but you got to settle the big controversy that we've had now. Dom says that his side of the family was correct. Um, the wealthy side of the family. <laughs> is that what it is? Because because we we've never asked you about that. What happened with the t berry versus the Tiberi? Well, if you talk to the nuns at the sales who, who uh, at the private school, I went to public school, uh, they would say it was T-Berry back in the day. Really? Uh, Don likes to say it's T-Berry. Ask them about the nuns back at the sales. Okay, we'll bring that up. Make a note. Yeah, make a note. <laughs> Congressman, it's always good to see you. And good